said Murray and Evans live to fight another day. That day looks like being tomorrow when they'll face either French eighth seeds Arthur Fies and Hugo Umber or Belgium's Sander Gilles and Joran Vegan who play today for the right to face the British duo. Adam. And away from Andy Murray, Tyrone, it's definitely going to be worth keeping an eye on the pool today, isn't it? Yeah, there's lots going on here. I'm at the Paris La Défense Arena. This is where the swimming events are being held. It does look like being a very, very busy day again as ever. It's all about the heats at the moment in the various disciplines this morning and there's plenty of Scottish interest to look forward to over the next hour or so. Kathleen Dawson, she goes in the heats of the women's 100 metre backstroke. If she's one of the 16 fastest across those heats, she'll progress to tonight's semi-finals. Just before that, Katie Shanahan, she goes in the 400 metre individual medley heats. If she's in the eight fastest in that, she'll progress to tonight's final. Also in the evening session, if I may just look ahead, Duncan Scott, he'll be targeting some silverware when he goes in the men's 200 meter freestyle final Scott who's already Britain's most decorated Olympic swimmer he got silver in the event in Tokyo last time round he'd dearly love to go one better this time we've uh, get to see a Scottish medal at these games as you mentioned but without wanting to tempt fate I think there's a decent chance we might get one here tonight I certainly hope so Tyrone but I mean there's there's lots going on away from the pool as well is there any, anyone else we should be looking out for in, in terms of Scottish yeah. athletes competing in the Olympics today yeah, Adam, I'll pick a, a couple out, if, if I may. There's a lot going on. I like the look of the rowing, the men's eight, which includes Scotland's Sholto Carnegie, and the women's eight, which includes Glasgow's Rowan McKellar. They'll both fancy their chances at this game. So they go into the heats later this morning at the badminton. Kirsty Gilmore, well, she's already been in action. She's just finished her first group match, and it's good news for her. She's just beaten Azerbaijan's Keisha Fatima Azara in straight games, so a terrific start for Kirsty. Elsewhere, Perth's Charlie Aldridge. He's taking part in the grueling sounding 35.2 kilometre men's cross-country mountain bike race meanwhile down in the water off Marseille at the sailing can you see Finn Sterrett continues in qualifying in the men's skiff 49er event alongside England's James Peter and if all of that wasn't enough for you in the women's rugby sevens Lisa Thompson will be involved when GB plays South Africa this lunchtime it was their final group match and fingers crossed again then in the quarterfinals this evening and last but not least Amy Costello Charlotte Watson and Sarah Robertson they'll be in action as the team GB hockey side take on Australia in their second pool match. So, Adam, I think it's a bit of something for everyone today, isn't it? Absolutely, Tyrone. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Tyrone Smith, our I'm reporter, off. Off live from Paris there, ahead of a big day in the pool for some Scottish Team GB athletes at the Olympics. Going to get absolutely nothing done today because the Rugby Sevens are an absolute joy to watch and I caught up with the women's cross-country mountain biking yesterday. It's nuts, so we need to watch Charlie Aldrich in that as well absolutely. this afternoon. Adam, thank you. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back in Paris at just before the end of the programme. You're tuned to Good Morning Scotland, the time now, half past eight. Oh. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. And that's time for the news and support from the borders with David Ferguson. Good morning. Police are appealing for information following a fatal crash involving two motorbikes on the A6008 yesterday. The incident happened around 2.30pm on Sunday and involved a Suzuki GSX-R and a Kawasaki ZX1400 motorbike. Emergency services attended and three riders, a 37-year-old man, a 29-year-old man and a 27-year-old woman, died at the scene. The road was closed and reopened around 9.30pm. Anyone who can help is asked to call Police Scotland on 101, quoting incident number 2028. The new Hoyk Business Centre has been in operation since April, but it was officially opened by Government Minister Tom Arthur on Friday. The Scottish Government has invested £2.6 million into the centre, with funding also coming from Scottish Borders Council. South of Scotland Enterprise is delivering a 12-month business accelerator programme from the centre to develop entrepreneurs, with events ranging from one-to-one -one support and business advisor drop-in sessions to events on podcasting and artificial intelligence for business. Goldsmith and jeweller Sarah Keith, who's based near Selkirk is one entrepreneur who feels she is benefiting. It's been a fantastic program. It's allowed me to allocate specific time to be able to develop my business and take it a stage further. So not just a start-up and day-to-day, -day, but actually thinking much more about the strategy of how to go forward and how to expand, growing different facets of my business. This has allowed me to spend some time really thinking about how to develop the profile of the business and the brand. And 
and all the business nuts and bolts that you might want to put to one side. Now, the weekend's Border Union show has been hailed as one of the best in recent years with bumper crowds and entries at the Kelso Showground during both days. There was plenty of entertainment and celebration in the show rings, but the more serious side of the agricultural sector was also high on the agenda. Martin Kennedy, president of NFU Scotland, told delegates at the event's business breakfast that he has already met with the new Labour government and believes farming can have a positive future. I mean, I'm an eternal optimist. Uh, I think I always have been, and probably doing this job you need to be, but I think we've got such a fantastic story to tell in agriculture. We've got some of the best soils there is across the world, and a really good climate. I think we've got to recognise that our ability is not just about producing food for ourselves, but the opportunity there is to produce food in a sustainable manner and export that to other countries that are struggling to do that. So if we can do that and more and help others, the opportunities that are here for Scotland are fantastic. Sport now, and Borders women were in action in the Olympic Games in Paris over the weekend. In the pool, Kelso's Lucy Hope helped the GB women's team to the 4x100 freestyle relay final, where they finished a creditable seventh. Selkirk's Sarah Robertson was a key performer for the GB women's hockey team in a tight opening match. They eventually lost to Spain 2-1, but they have four more pool games, starting with Australia at 4pm this afternoon. And Hoyk's Lisa Thompson was to the fore as the GB women's rugby sevens team, coached by Kieran Beattie from Selkirk opened with a 21-12 victory over Ireland. They lost 36-5 to Australia last night and faced South Africa at 1pm today, aiming to clinch a quarter-final spot. Elsewhere, West Linton's Patrick Harrison came off the bench to win a second cap and scored his first test try to help Scotland overcome a combative Uruguay 31-19 in Montevideo on Saturday, which ensured a clean sweep of wins for the Scots, the Scots from the Americas tour. Back home, the football season kicked off and in the Lowland League, Berwick Rangers started with a 1-0 home win over Linlithgow Rose, while Galafiri Dean Rovers suffered a 6-0 defeat away to Caledonian Braves. Not much success for Borders teams in the East League, unfortunately, as Coldstream lost 3-0 at Dalkeith, Peebles Rovers 3-2 at home to Edinburgh College and Bill of Leithen went down 4-3 at home to Bathgate, all in Division 2. In the third division, Hoyk Royal Albert drew 2 all at home to Pumferston and there was success for Linlithgow. Linton Hotspur, who beat Newborough 1-0. In cricket, Gala Hope beat hosts Edinburgh Ackies in their championship match by one wicket, and Kelso got the better of visitors Edinburgh seconds by three wickets in Division 2. Hoyk and Wilton lost away to Borough Muir in Division 3, where Selkirk were just pipped by Edinburgh University staff, and St Boswell's lost at home to Haddington, but in Division 5, Gala seconds beat Drummond Trinity while Melrose went down at Murrayfield Daffs. Berwick Bandits and Edinburgh Monarchs shared the Speedway spoils over the weekend, Berwick losing 51-39 away on Friday evening, but beating the Monarchs at Shieldfield 47-43 on Saturday, if I can get my tongue around that, to move off the foot of the championship table. So well done to the Bandits. Now with the Borders weather, here's Callum McCall. This morning we will see more extensive, but mainly high-level cloud, which may bring the odd shower but equally allow some hazy sun to come through. Into the afternoon, the cloud layers will thin further, allowing lengthy spells of sunshine. Despite the southwesterly breeze, still warm highs this afternoon of 17 to 20 degrees Celsius. Tonight we will see variable cloud in clear intervals and perhaps the odd patch of light rain for a time. Tomorrow, largely dry and settled with sunny spells. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. And we'll have more news from the borders at half past 12. But now we'll hand you back to Lucy and Laura and good morning Scotland. On digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds, BBC Radio Scotland. And this is Good Morning Scotland with Lucy and Laura. It's 24 minutes to nine. And I think it's fair to say at this point that the Conservatives were clobbered at the general election, but replacing Rishi Sunak hasn't exactly been going at a rate of knots. That's largely due to the remaining Tory MPs who want to examine the failings of the election in the cold light of day and ensure it won't happen again. The timetable to elect the new Conservative leader begins today, but will drag on until November the 2nd, until they pick their new leader. Well, let's talk now to Henry Hill, who's Deputy Editor of the Conservative Home website. Morning, Henry. Good morning. Kemi Badenoch is now has now thrown her hat in the ring, um, expecting anybody else. Uh, at this point, I don't think we are. Suella Braverman has announced that she won't be standing, um, and nominations close in a few hours. So 
it might be the case that there is some dark horse candidate with 10 nominations, but if so, they're not on anyone's radar that I've spoken to. And um, Kemi Beanock has been writing in The Times this morning. She says, if I have the privilege to serve, I'll, we'll speak the truth again. Does that sort of imply that she thinks that the current leadership weren't speaking the truth? I think the her criticism of the party is essentially that the rhetoric and the actions in government didn't match up at all, essentially. You look at the promises that the Conservatives were making on immigration, you look at the rhetoric from Jeremy Hunt and Rishi Sunak on taxation, and it simply bore no relation to the actual policies that their government were pursuing, and indeed the, the previous government since Boris Johnson. The net immigration was much higher uh, than it was in 2010 when the Conservatives were first elected, and the tax burden is at its highest level since 1948. So I think that's what she means. She's saying.